if the stories you remember changed in a way you'd never forget. T'Challa! What if the heroes you knew became something larger than life? On August 11th, expect the unexpected. Well, that's weird. And ask yourself the question, what if? Streaming August 11th, only on Disney+. Plus. Welcome back, everyone. This is my new Marvel What If trailer video and early review breakdown. The producers have also been doing a lot of press explaining how this is canon to the MCU, how that's all going to work. So also explain that too, because a lot of people were wondering whether or not this would be canon to the MCU because it's animated and they're getting really crazy with the multiverse. So if you were wondering, it is definitely canon. I will be doing videos for all of the episodes. There'll be nine total during season one. So be sure to subscribe to get all those if you're brand new to my channel. And I will keep doing the weekly giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just leave all your predictions for the series on the video. The new trailer footage also shows us a look at the Avengers during the events or before the events of Avengers Infinity War just because of the costumes that they're wearing. Like Iron Man is wearing his Infinity War costume. The character designs look very much like the characters from Infinity War. Like Black Widow has the short blonde hair. So because of the costumes are similar, this is probably the Marvel Zombies episode. But just starting with the whole canon of it all, because we just saw the Loki series, they just established the King the Conqueror is like the next big Thanos level villain, the next big Avengers level villain threat for Marvel Phase 4. So because of the way they got so crazy with the multiverse, everyone just wondered how this was going to spill into the What If series, which is also a very multiverse oriented series. The way the producers talked about it, they said that the animated characters would eventually show up in the live action projects, the live action movies, live action Disney Plus series, anybody was fair game. So the way they treated it, it during the series, they visit many different realities, many different universes during the events of the episodes. Those are basically all happening in these different realities that you see amidst the Loki finale here as the true version of the MCU multiverse is laid bare. Big hat tip to Sylvie for setting this all off. So the fact that the series is animated doesn't matter. It's still fully canon to the MCU the same way that the live action movies, Disney Plus series are canon to the MCU. Like everything crosses over with the movies help set up future movies. This is just the next step for that. It's a big change from the comics. I think a lot of people were just wondering because the original What If comic book series is just a series of one-offs. They treat it like Elseworlds adventures. The things that happened in the What If stories didn't really affect what was happening in the main comic book universe, the Marvel 616 universe. The really funny thing the producers talked about though, like talking about how crazy they got with the episodes, they said that they actually legit pitched a Luke Skywalker cameo inside one of the episodes. Because this is what if you could literally do the plot of that Patton Oswalt filibuster where you cross over the X-Men with the Star Wars characters and the original Marvel characters. But apparently Kevin Feige and Marvel were not down for the Luke Skywalker cameo. They're like, nope, that's too much. Can't do that. They also said when they were pitching the plot of some of the Guardians of the Galaxy episodes, Marvel turned them down because they said the story they had pitched was basically the plot of Guardians of the Galaxy 3, the movie James Gunn's getting ready to make. They didn't say what that pitch was, only that Marvel was like, you just pitched us the plot of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. We're already doing all that stuff that you just talked about in a movie pretty soon. Which should give you an idea for how crazy Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is going to be. I've already done a couple videos about that, so I'll include one of those links in the description below. The producers also explained that the only thing that they weren't really allowed to do during the What If episodes is they couldn't introduce really huge brand new characters like the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom, Namor, Wolverine, Deadpool, Galactus, even though we know all those characters are going to show up in the Marvel movies eventually. All the characters, at least during What If Season 1, had to be alternate versions of ones that we've either already seen as main characters in the movies, or they were side characters, or they were mentioned, or canonized in the MCU in some way. Like Howard the Duck is a really good example. Really just an easter egg, background character, just small cameo scenes in the first couple Guardians of the Galaxy movies, so he's not really a new character. They did screen the first three episodes early. They're each around 30 minutes long, a little bit longer than the WandaVision episodes, if you were wondering. But that half hour runtime also includes the credits. Episode one is what if Peggy Carter became Captain America instead of Steve Rogers, because Steve Rogers gets injured before they can administer the super soldier serum treatment. So Peggy Carter steps in. Then they give skinny Steve Rogers what they're calling the Hydra Stomper, Howard Stark Iron Man suit. Even though it should have been called the Hydra Buster, I do understand the logic, like it was Tony Stark who eventually came up with the Buster naming conventions for all of his armors, so Howard Stark wouldn't have thought to name something like that back during World War II. 
As you can see, she fights Red Skull, Arnim Zola. The plot is somewhat similar to the plot of the first Captain America movie, except we see a Tesseract portal gets opened up by Red Skull, allowing this tentacle creature through to Earth. I've already talked about this in the previous video. I don't think that this is meant to be the Shumagorath. If it were Shumagorath, it would have a giant eyeball in the middle and it would be way, way bigger. When the producers were talking about these other universe versions of the characters showing up in live action, they talked specifically about the Peggy Carter, Captain Carter character showing up in the live action movies and Disney Plus series. She's not the only one. She's probably just one of the first ones that you would see in the live action movies. But they didn't say which movie, so I don't know if that's going to be Doctor Strange 2, Multiverse of Madness, or if it's going to be some other future movie after that. Episode 2 is what if Black Panther became Star-Lord instead of Peter Quill? What if T'Challa was really the son of Ego the Living Planet instead of King T'Chaka? As you've seen from the trailer footage, Yondu comes to Wakanda to pick him up as a child instead of Peter Quill, and the plot loosely follows the Guardians of the Galaxy movie plot. The whole reason why Yondu came to Earth in the first place to pick them up was because he was on a mission. Ego hired him to return all of his children from all over the universe. When he was doing that giant 3D PowerPoint presentation of the weird orgies that he had all over the universe creating all those children, he basically hired Yondu to go bring those children back so that he could see if they would be compatible for his mission that he was trying to take over the universe. That was what all the skeletons were that Gamora and Nebula found, like all these failed experiments, like none of the other children were compatible. That's also why Yondu got kicked out of that original Guardians of the Galaxy squad with Sylvester Stallone's Starhawk. Their team was based on the OG Guardians 3000 team from way back earlier in Marvel Comics history. That predated the modern incarnation of the team, the one that they based the first MCU Guardians movie on. But during the events of the first Guardians movie, they explain Yondu got sick of trafficking children for Ego. And then when he came to get Peter Quill, and obviously now when he comes to get T'Challa, he decided not to take them back and he raises them like a surrogate father. So that's what we're seeing happen with Black Panther here. As you probably heard, Chadwick Boseman and Michael Rooker both came back to do their voices of the characters. The producers confirmed that Chadwick Boseman starred in four episodes total. May he rest in peace. Obviously, he can't come back himself for season two. So if they decide to bring T'Challa Star-Lord back in a future season, he'd have to be voiced by a different actor. But they didn't really address how they're going to handle that. Towards the end of the series, eventually they start forming this Multiverse Avengers team with all the different characters from different universes, the Guardians of the Multiverse as they're calling them. So the roster is going to change every season. I wouldn't worry too much about that right now. Once we see all the season one episodes, I'll talk more about that, like which characters are coming back during season two, what the roster is going to be like in future seasons. Episode 3 is what if Loki came to Earth during the events of the first Thor movie. That's why he's wearing his costume from the first Thor movie. You see in the trailer all this footage of him bringing the Asgardian army to Earth using the cask of Ancient Winters on Nick Fury. It's just a fun twist on the flashback in the first Thor movie in that prologue scene. He's using the cask of Ancient Winters on humans the same way that his father Lofi did. It is funny watching the Loki footage after seeing all the alternate versions of Loki during the Loki series. The whole idea with Party Thor, though, in the series, the one that joins the Guardians of the Multiverse team, is that he is a Thor that got his hammer back without learning his lesson in that first Thor movie. So he never reformed and continued to be the party animal that he was at the beginning of the movie. But as you can see here, this is Loki just asserting his dominance over Midgard, over Earth, in a much more successful way than he did during the events of the first Avengers movie with the Shintauri invasion after the Avengers had come together. So it's like saying, what if Loki tried to conquer Earth before the Avengers became the Avengers? Clearly it would have been a lot easier for him. I know there's a lot of questions about what's happening in these alternate realities with the characters that predate a lot of the Marvel Phase 1 events. Like, what about the Eternals? Like, even if they're on an alternate version of Earth, wouldn't the Eternals still be there and be able to stop Loki? They'll explain a lot of that logic during the Eternals movie later this year when we actually see it. The whole idea with the Marvel What If series is that it's not really changing the events of what happened in the Infinity Saga of movies. It's showing you what would happen if events played out differently, but using other universes outside of the main Marvel universe. Technically, the MCU is now a really big multiverse, so it should be called the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse. But I think just for simplicity's sake, it's easier just to continue to refer to it as the MCU. I know during Loki episode 1, there was that 616 easter egg. They were basically saying that the original Infinity Saga version of Loki that died during Infinity War was Loki 616. But if you've been following all the MCU movies so far, they've been saying that the MCU is in a different universe. The whole idea is that the main Marvel comic book universe is still the 616 universe. I think they're just calling Loki 616 as a subtle wink on that, saying that he's the original main version of Loki. 
but they're not calling this universe the MCU, the 616 universe. You may have also seen that Clark Gregg is coming back to do the voice of Coulson. He's just coming back because some of the episodes will cover the events of the early Marvel Phase 1 movies that feature Coulson before he was killed by Loki during the first Avengers movie. It's not the older version of Coulson coming back after the events of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Overall, the series is amazing. If you liked how crazy they got with the Loki series, this obviously takes that way further. I'll be doing weekly episode videos just like I did for the Loki series for all the other Marvel Disney Plus series. All those episodes will post every Wednesday. It'll be the exact same schedule of my videos for the Loki series. But if you have any big questions about the What If series, just write them below in the comments and I'll add them to my future videos. There'll be a couple more trailers probably before episode one drops. So it's going to be a lot of fun just seeing how crazy they get with the multiverse episodes. I'll name a new giveaway winner when I post my next Marvel video. Everyone click here for that brand new Venom Let There Be Carnage trailer and Spider-Man Easter eggs and click here for my new Loki video about the connection between Iron Man and Kang inside the MCU. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight.